Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Rose and I got in in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State Zone 8B and I'm about 40 minutes outside of Seattle. And in today's video, I'm going to be working on one of my three compost systems that I have here. And this one is going to be my favorite. It's the easiest way for me to do large scale composting and then be able to plant within it almost immediately. Like I said, I'm in the Pacific Northwest Zone 8B. So my gardening season, once it hits fall, winter, there isn't a lot to grow. So I can start growing in this compost system around spring and that's when I really like to do it. But if you're in somewhere that is a little bit warmer, you could probably plant in it sooner. But I'm going to show you what my favorite composting system looks like. So this is my raised bed here and in it we have soil which is actually compost that I started this time last year. So this is what it looks like when it's finished and as you can see there are already things growing. So this time last year this bed was filled with garden debris just like this. So if you've been following along I've been cleaning out my garden beds and this is everything that I removed. So this is all the garden debris that is going to go into this raised bed. So at this point in time, I like to remove everything that's in here and use this compost to fill my other raised beds over there. And there are quite a few beds that need to be filled. I definitely don't have enough. So I'm only going to be able to top off one of the beds. And that's because I'm only going to take half of it to top off one bed. And the other half I'm going to reserve to go back into this compost. And I know that doesn't make sense yet, but I'm gonna work you through what I'm gonna do and then hopefully it'll make sense in the end. So the first order is to get the soil out of here. So before I get to moving all this out, I want to show you what it looks like. This compost is my favorite way because it breaks down really, really fine. And if you saw all the garden debris that I put in, those are really nice and big, but after a while it just breaks down really really nicely especially when you get into interior you get a couple of like or there's probably a root or something and then the sunflower stalks those are a little bit take a little bit longer to break down but it breaks down very very nicely like I think that's part of a sunflower stalk but yeah it looks really really good so the first thing I like to do is remove half of the soil. So I'm going to shovel it into this wagon right here. And that is what I'm going to use to top off another bed that I have. I moved a lot of soil out and just kind of give you an idea of what it breaks down to. This is what it looks like. You can see some of the larger stalks there. Those are the sunflower stalks, which are a little bit more, take a little bit more time. But overall, it breaks down really, really well. And then here, you'll see more of the sunflower stalk. And I'll either leave it or I'll take it out and put it right back into this bed to continue decomposing. But overall, everything is nice and fluffy. So this bed here is the bed with the lowest soil level. When I initially filled these, they were almost full, but over the last, what, two or three years, even after topping them off every year, it's dropped by almost 50%. And there's a good six inches of soil, but I wanna grow root crops in here, so I wanna add a little bit more soil to it, so that's why I'm filling this bed. But what I do is I just literally tip over my wagon, and that's the easiest way to fill it. I don't bother shoveling and just get as um, much out of it as possible. And then we're just going to do that again. So I got the second wagon of soil in there and the wagon I use can hold anywhere from three to four bags of soil. 
and I buy the cubic foot bag of soil that is about $5 a piece. So I'm saving anywhere from $30 to $40, which is a lot considering soil is not cheap and $5 a bag is on the cheaper side and it's organic. So I'm saving quite a bit of money just by making my own compost. So I got all of the compost out. I have a split between this wagon and this wheelbarrow and I'm gonna set these aside and I'll talk about that later. And I position my wagons very strategically and that will make more sense when I get to that next step. But you wanna put your wagon right next to your bed, okay? So the next step is to get all of this into your raised bed. And this has been sitting out here for a few weeks, so it was a lot taller. So it definitely has condensed down in the last few weeks and it will continue to condense down once we get into the bed and as it breaks down. So you can get all of this into it. My only recommendation is if you have anything that's really fleshy like cucumbers, pumpkins, tomatoes, try to get those in the bottom of the bed so that you don't attract a lot of flies just for the comfort of walking by and not getting a face full of flies. If you have buckets like I do, this makes it really easy because you can just left and fill. This is going to be really gross because it's been raining and this is filled with water. So I'm going to try not splash myself with this, but super gross. Just going to dump that out. Oh, that smells so bad. Typically, it doesn't get like this. I'm usually a little bit more on it, but this is also another reason why I like to compost this way because typically there is no smell. Unfortunately, for this time, there is. Okay, I think I'll let it dissipate a little bit. All right, now that I got that dumped in, I want to spread it out a little bit because I don't want there to be like a cluster of just one type of garden debris in a corner. I want to get it spread out so that when the compost is more ready, it's a little bit more homogenous and there isn't like pockets of debris, if, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. And a garden fork is going to work best, but if you don't have a garden fork, shovel will do. Oh, that smells so bad. Hopefully you can see, because I know the camera's at a weird angle, but this is the easiest part, is just grabbing your fork and lifting what you can. Like I said, it's pretty condensed down, so it's heavy. But I'm just gonna grab what I can and get it in there. So naturally when you're working, you're going to end up creating a pile like I kind of did right here. The goal is to kind of get this spread out. So I will stop in the middle and spread this out. So I will show you what that looks like after I do it. All right. So this is what it looks like now that I spread it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to continue working and then I'll come back and show you what I look like once I get everything filled. Hopefully you can see in the camera, but the bed is starting to get full and I still have quite a bit left of garden debris. So what I like to do is actually get in here and step on it and kind of get it to condense down so that I can fit more in. And if you're going to do this, be very careful that you don't fall and break an angle in there because there are a lot of uneven ground. So I added more and now I need to get in here a second time and get it to condense down as much as possible. And just to give you an idea of how much garden debris I pulled out, this is how much is still left. All right, so the bed is filled again. And at this point, there's really not enough room to condense it down. 
So at this point, I still have quite a bit left. So this is where we're just going to start piling it on. And I don't know if you notice or can see, but there is plastic down there um, just to make clean up a little bit easier. I just under I just underestimated how much garden debris I had. So a bigger plastic would have been a lot nicer, but I do have plastic under there just to make this part of cleanup a little bit easier. So I'm going to start piling it on and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So I got everything in the raised bed and this is what it looks like. There's a slight little hump if you can see. So at this point it's just a waiting game. So I'm waiting for this to completely drop till it is just right below the raised bed. And once that happens, I'll come in and top it off with the soil or the compost that we shoveled out. And the reason I do that is because it creates a nice little layer on top. It reduces the number of bugs around the compost heap, pile, bed, whatever you want to call it. And it just makes the area more pleasant. It doesn't smell. And if I want it to, I can plant in it right away. So this is what the space looks like now that it's been cleaned. And there's still a lot of little garden debris, which is not a big deal. That stuff will disintegrate and just become one with the gravel and the soil underneath. That's why I really love having gravel. It's super easy to clean. You know, after a few heavy rains, I'll just rake the gravel and it'll look like brand new. So that is my favorite way to compost. I do have another method of composting that I do, which is more of the traditional type. And I'm going to take you over there really quickly just so I can show you the comparison between the two and why I like this method much better. So this is my other composting area. This is the type that's more of like the three different bin where you can like rotate it. And I actually really like this setup. And let me show you this bin right here so this bin was started around the same time that the raised bed was started last year and as you can see not a lot of it has broken down underneath i can see it's a little bit more broken down but not quite as much i don't know if you can tell in here in the corner if you look in there a little bit let me see if i can zoom in all right i don't know if you can see but if you look down in there where it's a little bit deeper i can still see a lot of woody pieces so this bin was started around the same time my raised bed was and you can see that one completely broke down while this one didn't. So I do like composting this way. It's just not my favorite. It's a slower version for me. And mind you, this bin was completely filled. It was overflowing to the top. So it has compacted, condensed down a lot. So I'm sure I have a lot of good soil in there. I just need to sift it out, which I don't have to do with the other one. All right, you guys, the rain is starting to come down. So I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully I explained it well enough so it wasn't too confusing, but this is my favorite way to compost. If I had a chance to redo my garden, I would definitely build a couple of raised beds just so that I can fill it with garden debris throughout the growing season so I don't have to create a pile and shovel it in. That would be ideal. Maybe I'll still do that still. So even though I'm ending this video here, I do want to show you what it looks like um, when it's time to top it off with the soil. I still have my asparagus bed that needs to die back. And once that does, I'm gonna cut it down and put it, pile it on top. So there will be a part two, it'll probably be coming in a few weeks or so. So make sure you are subscribed if you wanna see the final ending of this compost bed. 
So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.